Welcome to Talking Wow, the podcast where we talk about World of Warcraft, believe it or not. My name is Tom, and today we're going to be talking about experiencing Mists of Pandera for the first time in WoW Remix. To do that, we had to scour the lands and find somebody that didn't play Mists of Pandera when it launched back in 2012. We found that very person. We think there's only one. There might be a few more, but the person we've got on the show today, it's a recurring guest, Sean from the Recruit a Friend podcast. Hey, Sean. Hey, Tom. Hey, Marty. Thanks for having me back on the show. Add a little spoiler there. Marty is here as well. Hello, Marty. Slow down. Life is to be savored. So, yeah. Me and Marty were playing a bit of WoW Remix, and we actually got talking about, like, oh, what? I wonder what this is like for somebody that's never played Mists of Pandera, and they're, like, jumping in here for the first time to experience it. Sean, when you compare this to... Well, actually, let's rewind a little bit, because, like I mentioned at the top there, you didn't play Mists of Pandera when it launched. What was going on? What, what, what was happening? Why weren't you playing WoW? Uh, I had taken a 10-year hiatus at the end of uh, Ice Crown Citadel. So we, we we finished Ice Crown Citadel, and then I had joined the Navy. Uh, in 2008, I had joined the Navy. We finished Ice Crown Citadel, and I think it was about 2009 when I said, you know what, I can't keep up with the game in the way that I would want and focus on this very demanding, very new career for me. Um, so I said, I'm going to take a break, and I, I stopped playing then, and I was gone right up until... Uh, they pulled me back in with uh, Bolvar and Sylvanas in the Shadowlands trailer. But I missed all that. I have a theory about that. You oh. s- you stopped in Wrath of the Lich King and you came back in around Shadowlands. So are you actually the Lich King then? Oh, oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I guess. Although technically the Lich King returned in Legion uh, with the Death Knight uh, Order Hall and stuff. But yeah, I guess maybe I'm um, some part of me. A lot of my, I have often said that a lot of my personality, far too much of it, in fact, is tied to Warcraft 3 and the characters there. So maybe somewhere deep inside, I uh, I long to be Arthas. So when it comes to Mop Sean, you missed it. Uh, so let's ah. move on. You weren't here for it. So like me and Marty back in, in 2012, like jumping into Pandera, the, the broken intro quests and you know on that gyrocopter if you were playing alliance and you know getting to uh tend your farm and all those things so actually farm's not in remix so that's probably something else we can mention but sean when you compare this just to the conventional expansion launch that you you go into and you do your things how is mr pandera and wow remix comparing to that uh, I so it's a smorgasbord of uh, content right now. It is just everything is unlocked. Which at an expansion launch we shouldn't expect. We won't get that. We'll have our leveling campaign. We'll have our like her leveling dungeons, and then season one will start. But we're not going to have that full fleshed out story and that full you know breadth of two plus years of content all at launch. So it's important. I think in that regard, playing Mister Pandaria Remix now makes the experience just a little bit better, but also introduces some challenges that I've been dealing with um, than, than it would have been had I experienced it uh, right uh, at launch. I want to ask you, like, are you feeling overwhelmed? Because when Mr. Pandera, like, launched as an expansion, we as players were overwhelmed because we went in there, we had all these daily quests to do, and I think, yes, the reputation gain in WoW Remix is vastly sped up, which I think definitely helps, but even myself going back in right now and just seeing the amount of like story, lore, side quests, like how are you fitting that in your noggin? It's it's been so. It, this is entirely because of the the remix format and when it is launching now at the end of of season four for Dragonflight. I am in a very lucky situation that I don't have to do the stuff that I would have to do if it was current content. So if it was current content, I'd have to do the campaign quest. I'd have to do all the dailies to get my rep up for whatever came with the rep. I'd have to be grinding dungeons for gear, and then I'd have to be raiding on a schedule. Because Mr. Pandaria Remix isn't a current season, and it's just a sandbox of, here you go, do what you want, 
I'm not shackled by those same constraints, but I don't have to worry about the dailies, and I'm not. I haven't done, I've done like the first version of each one, and then I haven't gone back. There's no reason for me to have to grind out that rep. Um, so it's not, not a stressor for me. And, and because of that, it's allowed me to relax and really enjoy the story for the journey that it is and immerse myself more in the beautiful, beautiful zones of Pandar. So Remix is a, is a smash hit for, for how to, to experience this content. <laughs> it's amazing to also follow you on Twitter and see your, your, uh, travels through, through the lands of, of Pandaria. Uh, and some of the, the beautiful screenshots that uh, you've taken uh, in your journey. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. It's the, the Zones Kunlai Summit. Um, if you, so there's a podcast I listen to that at the end asks, if Azeroth was real, where would you call home? And uh, it, uh, I've often said Nagrant. I've always picked Nagrant because it's peaceful, those floating islands. I would just set up a little tent on one of those islands. If any zone ever in the history of the game was going to compete with it, it's Kunlai Summit. That zone is just... It's majestic. I can't even begin to describe how amazing it is to just fly. I don't use dragon rough riding because I'm not a fan of it. So I just like regular mount fly. I I boomer fly instead of zoomer fly. Well, you're doing it the way it was. Uh, you know, you're you're. That's a bit of a boomer there, but just going back and like I'm not using that dragon riding. I'm I'm doing it how it was meant to be enjoyed. That's right. Yeah. It's but that zone. It's. The clouds look like a watercolor painting. The sun glinting off of the the snow over the mountains. Oh yeah, it's so good. Please so tell good. me you have the music on as well, because I know there's people out there not looking at Marty that play this game without the music on. Yeah. So in current season content, if I was in a raid or a dungeon, I turn the music off because I use a lot of audio cues. So just like having visual clutter is not good, having audio clutter is not good when you use audio cues. But as we've said, Mister Pandaria Remix is not a competitive sweaty try hard mode it is it's not a joyous it's, i got it's not <laughs> it's, it is not despite my item level 476 Hang on, we've got a we've got a frog farmer on the line we're gonna bring them in no we're not go ahead sean <laughs> um yeah so i have the music on and the music is i actually had been streaming the raids because i clear the raids daily um and i had to Stop listening to the music in the rage because it was like double music on my stream because I play other music on my stream. So, uh, but when I play, when I'm keep questing, it's just mop music all the time. There's no, I don't even watch this is, and this is crazy. I normally, when I'm doing anything in game, I'll have a stream on in the background. I have become so enamored with the music and the atmosphere and just the whole vibe of Pandaria that I'm now playing the game in complete isolation. There's no stream on in the background. I'm not listening to a podcast. It is just me and Lore Walker Cho, and it is fantastic. Are you are you reading quest text? I am. I'm so I've installed the dialogue UI add-on made by Peter Yu, the designer of Narcissus. Big shout out to Narcissus and Peter Yu. And it has changed, it's completely altered my experience with questing. I it does a little zoom in over the shoulder look. Uh, you can change the way the quest box looks. And I'm reading every quest text. And, I, and not just that, I'm approaching people, and before I even click them, so current season, Sean, I would run up, I would click, I would hit accept, I would look on the map where I have to go, and I would go do it, and that's it. But Mr. Pandaria, Sean, slows down. So I walk up to the group, and I just sit I just sit and listen for a bit as they have these conversations. And there's all this talking happening in the game outside of everything, and it really does feel like you're there. I, I've been having such a good, and it, it helps that I also look kind of like a Pandaren, but it is, in, <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, I read the quest text and then afterwards I, like, I'm doing all this stay while listens. I'm just sort of hanging out and just listening to them talk. And it's, the voice acting is superb. The dialogue is superb. having a little brewski as well, you know, just, yeah. I don't know, like just get yeah, into the right. RP of it all as well. Yeah. I am. Uh, it's it's great. The little storm stout, little storm stout for uh, for the game. I was going to say we're all time running this. You know, we're doing probably what you do regularly in like a season. You know, click the quest where we got to go. You know, farming the frets, farming the bronze. You know, just we're the machines. And, and Sean is just you know in the background. Just he's just walking along, like staring at the trees. And you know, he sees like a little bird in the branch, and he's just like, "What a wonderful world we live in." What's bronze? And, you know, there's just something 
it's just something really refreshing about hearing someone else's perspective that you know you and you're very much known for you we had you on the plunderstorm episode where you're like setting your own goals for things in game and you're not going to be defined by the meta and i really love that about you sean and i think that's sort of why we got you on today as well but i i just love your your sort of laid back approach to this as well and it, it very much does embrace the you know the pandaren way you're you're fully immersed into that and i'm i'm here for it for you yeah i uh it's been it's been great and i mean marty said it at the beginning you know slow down and it's like i think a lot of how we feel about expansions in warcraft is tied to where we are at that point in our lives as well um and i'm really grateful that i'm getting the chance to experience mists now when i'm at a point in my life where i am more willing to embrace that mentality of hey slow down and you're fighting against like the shah of pride and the shah of anger and the shah like it's just all of these things that just sort of like resonate with me more now i think than they maybe would have in 2012 when i was more worried about uh frivolous things um yeah so it's it's I, i get like there's there's only one like major uh, not major one minor complaint that i have with experiencing it this way um but other than that it's been a, a joyous a joyous ride so far and i can't wait i'm in the dread wastes can't wait to to see where the story takes me what's your gripe so my gripe is a problem that exists outside of remix and is a problem i guess with warcraft as a whole and it's that when you go into an expansion that is complete all of the quests are there all at once with nothing to differentiate what order to do them in. So I landed in Town Long Steps and there's a quest that, that starts there. There's a quest with uh, Terran Zhu, the head of the Shadow Pan. And I don't, I started doing it. And I was like, I don't know if this is pre or post Unlai Summit when I find out that he's been corrupted. And I go through. And he makes mention at one point to how he regrets letting hatred take over him. So then I was like, okay, maybe this is after. Maybe I fix him and then he comes here and does this afterwards. But they make no mention of the Shadow Pan Monastery being corrupted at all. Um, and then in that same spot, so one of the camps, Varisa is standing there with a big campaign quest on her head. So I go and I talk to her and she's like, hey, you know, this is where we've got to fight against the, I think it's the Sun Reavers and we're going to go to the Isle of Thunder and let's go, are you ready to go see Jaina? And I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is 5.1 or later. So I didn't do that quest. And that's the the complaint that I have is that either an add-on developer, maybe Peter Yu, um, or Warcraft, it there needs, I think there needs to be some way to differentiate what is, what campaign am I tied to here? Like, is this 5.0 or is this 5.1? And I I think about Dragonflight and what it would be like to walk into Dragonflight as a returning player and then it's just campaign quests all over Veldraken. You know what I mean? And the stories are good and yeah, they're laid up in such a way that you don't have to play them necessarily in order, but it feels weird when somebody references something that you didn't do yet. Um, and it also feels weird when you're talking to somebody and they're making no reference to something that they did do. So I would really, really like if I didn't have to go to external sources, a uh, special shout out to some members of the Dungeon Dojo, uh, Neek, who I just message all of the time anytime I have a lore question. Um, uh, I'm like, hey, am I doing this in the right order? Because I there's another quest where I talked to Anduin and we're talking to the four heads of the different orders and he wants to open up the gates to the uh, veil of eternal blossoms i'm like i don't know if this is supposed to be happening now or if this is later um anyway so that's that's why that's why one issue is that i like i'm I'm in it i'm there like i'm helping show me and i'm helping uh 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 len tenderpaw and i just i'm just like oh my god these people are so amazing i love all these characters you know i'm defending stonepaw village and then it's like oh am i supposed to be doing this now or is this a later thing? And then that just sort of pulls me out of it a little bit. Yeah, you're always like second guessing of like, is this the right quest to be doing now? And I, I definitely think that that is something they Blizzard need to uh, 
have probably something in place. I can't see them going back and fixing, you know, quest lines from the past. But, you know, going forward, it's definitely something, you know, especially if you're arriving late in an expansion and there's been a few updates. And even just having like, you know, that, that bit of dialogue when you click on the quest to say, hey, have you checked out this quest before you do this? And then it sort of points you back in a direction where you probably should go before you... Because it's, like you say, you're you're having to go to outside sources. Uh, probably myself and Marty are having to use that thing called our memory, which isn't very good. And I've definitely found myself doing quests and then suddenly being on the uh, Isle of Thunder and being like, no, I shouldn't have been here yet. I was trying to do this in order, but I guess I'm not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, even just numbering, just number the quests, like, you know, and, and you don't have to do the side quests. Let them let them happen as they happen. But number, if you numbered the campaign quests starting at one, then people would just know. Okay, this is the one I do next. Because they have obviously a path. I I realize you for all the stuff you want that freedom to just go wherever. Great. But if you just had that number, some something that says, hey, this is this is the intended path for this story to be experienced the best way. But we're getting there. We're taking our time. We're figuring it out. It's the pound away. Uh, before we wrap this up, Sean, because unbelievably we're getting to the end of another episode of Talking Wow, uh, did I hear you had some spicy hot takes? I do have some spicy hot takes. Yeah, so I am I'm playing off stream, playing the campaign and enjoying the story and sort of just like taking my time with it. But on stream, uh, I full clear all of the raids on Heroic every day um, and do my, my, my quests. I maxed out on on gear upgrades for bronze, so I'm 476 item level. Um, and I'm working towards getting all of the uh, transmogs unlocked. So I am still a bit sweaty. Uh, and it, there's like two Shans. Inside you, there are two Shans. Um, <laughs> yeah, like one of uh, your one of your uh, like hands and, and feet are like webbed, but not yeah. both of them. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, but my spicy hot take is I've seen a lot of discourse about people saying... Um, how remix players are gatekeeping content. Oh, they're gatekeeping raids. Oh, you can't get into raids. Oh, the frogger's this, the frogger's that. Um, and my spicy hot take is, I think that's all bullshit. I don't think anybody's gatekeeping anything. I think people immediately saw a power gain in some others and equated that with being uh, difficult to get into raids because... I actively, and a lot of my friends who are also master level, will actively invite lower item level players into the group because we can two man it. We can two man a rate. So we don't need, like, I could literally just go in and two, two man it. So we could fill it with other people that, that need it, that, you know what I mean, that, that can't do that. Um, and there's, I also heard comments like, oh, people are getting kicked out of raids if they're not doing enough damage. And I think that that, I don't think that's ever happened because, uh, I can solo a boss. Why would I care that you like I the damage meters? If you look at them are so it's like 10 million DPS and then everything else is a single line. There's zero. It, I don't think it's happening. I think it's a made up draw man argument um, that people online assumed would happen or they desperately wanted it to happen. So they could say, look, our gamer is bad, um, but I don't think it exists. I think you start your own group. You're going to get into a, you're going to get some people that are powered up. And uh, or even joining groups is, is is a bit easier. I don't I don't think this world exists where people are saying, you know, we're doing heroic Mogishan vaults must be four seventy six item level. I don't. I haven't seen it in the LFG tool myself. No, we haven't seen uh, me listing groups then. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The talking wow groups all all require. That's my hot take. Is that I actually think that this and it makes me think more about Plunderstorm too. But th- 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 this makes th- I actually think that this. Patch this mode. This game mode has been more uh, inviting and more welcoming to everyone than a lot of the internet would have you believe. Um, and I've had people tell me like, "Oh no, it's happening!" I'm like, okay, well, have you personally experienced it? Or are you going by what people are telling you on Twitter? And no, I don't know anybody who has personally either seen somebody removed from a group or been removed from a group. And I don't know anybody who has said, "You know, I, I can't get into groups because they're gatekeeping by item level." I've seen someone being removed from the group. Really? Yes, but he was AFK uh, and couldn't get back into the game because of a box. So. What? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. 
There we go, Sean. We just debunked your uh, hot tick there. I would argue that that experience is not that his DPS was just too low. So get it. Although I guess his DPS would have been quite low. When it was, <laughs> his, dip, his, his DPS was zero, you know? So that's that's what I'm taking away from it. He was not doing any DPS. Yeah, I, I, haven't, I haven't forgiven Marty for removing me from that group. But I mean, it, it's like everything. You, you want to get yourself into a community, a group of people that you know, you feel safe, you feel comfortable with, and you're always going to get people outside of that that are maybe playing the game a different way, maybe a bit more intense as well. But I think the only thing I've really seen is some people just rush ahead and pull bosses before people are ready. Or, you know, at the end of the dungeon, you've got a few people dead and all the healers just bugger off and nobody... And I'm just like, come on, like, you know, what is it to, like, do a little res or just wait a couple of seconds for people to catch up? But, yeah, I mean, I think overall... It's been a great sort of space to, you know, jump into dungeons, jump into raids, because I also, you know, if you clued in, you'll know that the, the scaling and everything is just a bit wackadoodle uh, most of the times because you can jump in there at like level 10 and feel like you're an absolute god. Um, so it, is, it feels like a nice space actually to maybe, you know, try a bit of tanking or try a bit of healing because uh, actually it's probably not really going to matter because, um, you know, but you still get that feeling that you're, you are fulfilling that role to a degree but yeah i think overall is it has felt more more along the positive sides than uh maybe what uh, uh plunder storm was uh <laughs> tuning into especially at the start and unfortunately we've reached the end of this hot take episode of talking wow we could just listen to Sp- sean's spicy uh rantings all day but uh unfortunately we've got to wrap up here uh sean thank you so much for coming on talking wow again we uh, really enjoy having you here and we'll have all details about your podcast recruiter friend in our show notes and you can find talking wow on youtube social media at talking wow leave us a comment leave us a, a view of an opinion on sean's takes you know it's uh, definitely worth replying to and uh, that's all we had for you today i've been tom i've been marty i've been sean and we've been talking wow remix Thanks for tuning in, champion! Did you enjoy this episode of Talking Wow? If so, why not drop a review on your podcast catcher of choice or leave us a comment? You can find Talking Wow on Twitter or YouTube over at Talking Wow. Hope to see you again soon! <laughs>